Thank you, JB. It's an honor to be here um, and to also debate against my friend Lars. <laughs> All right. Uh, I thought that he had actually the harder position because there's such a lack of data, and most of it is his, um, and much of it saying in, in favor of mesh. But here we go. So uh, these are my disclosures, uh, some research grants, none industry funded. Um, why should mesh be used for ventral hernia repair? Let's just take a step back, because we have such little data on women um, faced with this uh, issue of hernia during pregnancy or in between pregnancies. When we look at the use of mesh, uh, we know that the hernia recurrence risk is higher without mesh. Um, and this is a systematic review, meta-analysis, including 10 trials. Um, keep in mind this included incisional hernias along with the primary, and our question here today is for primary ventral hernia repair in pregnancy. Um, but this showed a relative risk, which um, uh, concluded that this was in favor of a mesh repair in terms of recurrence, with a 64% less risk of hernia recurrence with mesh. So pretty compelling. When we look at patients who uh, develop hernias, let's say during pregnancy, uh, many times these are umbilical hernias, and uh, Dr. Georgeson uh, pointed this out with a case um, study. In this uh, study looking, again, at a Danish cohort study of uh, over 1,300 patients, this was for patients less than two centimeter umbilical or epigastric hernias, and they evaluated the total recurrence. So this is um, uh, perhaps even more accurate than just looking at uh, clinical recurrences. They also included um, those requiring operation and found that the recurrence rate was 21% uh, in the sutured repair and half in the mesh repair. And so this is a common problem that we might see in our postpartum patients. In a randomized, double-blind, multi-center trial at 12 hospitals, and these are adults with primary umbilical hernia repair, and these are small um, hernias, one to four centimeters. They were stratified by hernia size at one to two centimeters, as well as um, greater than two to four, excuse me, greater than two, two four centimeters. And they compared sutured repair to mesh repair with a median follow-up of 25 months, so not a very long follow-up. Um, but certainly over two years. They found fewer hernia recurrences after the mesh at 4% compared to a 12% sutured um, uh, recurrence risk. Many of our patients who are postpartum will also have some degree of rectus diastasis, and we know from a handful of studies that this also increases the risk of hernia recurrence, particularly in combination with umbilical hernia repair. So that even for small umbilical hernias, less than two centimeters, or epigastric hernias, in the setting of rectus diastasis, the increased uh, risk of recurrence is daunting, 31% versus 8%. So with all these combined, we also know there's a significant morbidity and cost associated with recurrent repair. Patients with multiple repairs are more likely to undergo reoperation, have longer OR time, surgical site infection, and recurrence. And we have to remember the patients we're talking about are mothers. Now, whether they are working at home or working outside of home or both or primary caregivers or have help, they, these are busy women, and we are obligated um, to share all of the data with them and evidence and make a, a decision with them that suits them. Uh, a number of women are busy. They don't want to have another operation. They don't want to deal with the pain of a hernia through a pregnancy, which can be tough already. And when we look, these are including patients who are not necessarily postpartum, but uh, female patients. Are we failing our female hernia patients now? There is so little data about female patients in hernia repair. And we're not doing that well. So this is a presentation that we, um, uh, that my group made at our uh, recent International Hernia Congress in Miami, um, which is submitted for publication, looking at the NISQIP data from 2005 to 2015. And females had a significantly greater length of stay, operative time, wound infection, organ space, surgical site infection, UTI, and bleeding requiring transfusion. Now granted, in the um, female group compared to male, there was a greater obesity rate. But if we stratified and looked at um, categories of BMI, there was a greater morbidity in each BMI category compared to males. And we don't know why this is just yet. So aren't we obligated to give the best repair? The true incidence of ventral hernia occurrence or recurrence of symptomatic ventral hernia or incarcerated ventral hernia during pregnancy is really not known. It's underreported. 
Um, as Dr. Jordan uh, pointed out already in the study, and I won't belabor the point, but only to say that we know from the study um, that was published in the obstetric literature that uh, the pregnancy group in this retrospective cohort study were more likely um, to have hernia recurrences. And this might actually underestimate the risk uh, because the recurrences were defined as reoperations and not clinical, um, clinically identified hernias. Now, granted, the pregnancy group were more likely to have obesity, uh, BMI greater than 30, a history of tobacco use, and wound complications, but even adjusting for the confounders, um, while it weakened uh, this increased risk, it was still present. Um, and then I'll just point to uh, Lars's work, because Dr. Jensen, and his colleague, presented this at our International Congress, and actually came out quite strongly based on his, um, uh, these studies that um, there is an increased risk of ventral hernia recurrence after pregnancy, um, as uh, Lars pointed out. It was independently associated with ventral hernia recurrence. Um, now, recurrence isn't everything, and Dr. Jorgensen also pointed this out, that there is an instance of pain. Um, there are some uh, retrospective studies that looked at this. Um, this study that he mentioned only included eight patients. Um, these are patients who gave birth after a laparoscopic eye palm. And so um, one may argue, because we don't know yet, well, does the positioning of the mesh make a difference? Does it make a difference, really, um, when we look at these uh, longer-term database studies um, where uh, we put the mesh in terms of the risk of recurrence? Is there less migration of the mesh or pulling if it's not an intraperitoneally placed mesh? Um, now in the study, it's true, five of the eight patients had pain at the repair site in the last months of pregnancy. Um, having been pregnant, it's uncomfortable to be pregnant in the last few months of pregnancy. Um, this pain was not continuous, and I certainly don't discount the pain that these women had, um, because I believe it to be true, I'm sure, but it did resolve after delivery. Um, from his work with a systematic uh, review, again, there's very little data. This included 31 uh, papers, four studies reported on 40 patients completing pregnancies after a hernia repair. Um, and six out of the 12 uh, patients who had mesh repair did have pain in the last trimester. Um, there were two recurrences after the mesh repair. Um, 27 patients said it was the sutured repair, um, and no recurrences reported, um, uh, were reported, but the follow-up wasn't specified. So there are some limitations um, as um, present in the systematic review. And this is uh, just the findings of patients who had um, emergency repairs um, during pregnancy. So um, from this, um, and this also from the authors, it's difficult to draw any definitive conclusions regarding the hernia parent women of childbearing age. And within the limited uh, case reports and series, um, there weren't subsequent major complications that were reported, other than some reports of pain in the third trimester. And that um, they concluded that it appears safe without increased risk of hernia recurrence, but of course with limited follow-up. So in the end, we have an obligation to our patients. With limited data to the contrary, shouldn't we at least offer the best repair? And I hope that I've showed you with the evidence that that includes a mesh repair. Um, we have to repair the hernia with consideration, though, of the patient's priorities and preferences. Maybe recurrence isn't the right metric, and that might not be the concern of the patient. It could be pain, in which case we would adjust. And so I will disclose, of course, um, that I do believe in a, in a true patient and surgeon partnership and discussion of all of this, um, though I'm um, debating for MESH today. Uh, the best practice using current evidence for ventral hernia repair um, should be conducted regardless of the biologic sex. Um, because there's really a positive evidence to guide the surgeon specifically for women of childbearing age and um, an inter-pregnancy um, hernia. Thank you very much.